What's up YouTubers, it's Vincent1989 from Blitzkrieg Brushes here and uh, today I've taken a break from the Magic the Gathering to do some painting videos. You'll have already seen my How to Paint Urukai Berserker. This one's its counterpart, How to Paint Gladrim Archer. So uh, what I'm going to start with today is obviously a Gladrim Bowman here. This is one of my preferred poses. These are the new plastic models. Rather than, well, I say new, the newer plastic models rather than the old metal models. So the detail in the armour isn't quite so fine, but and they're they're a bit out of scale, they're a bit too big. They'd be more at home in Warhammer Fantasy, but they're nice sculpts. There's lots of detail to get painted, so I like them. I've got a single box of the previous box size. So I've got twenty four of these guys, eight archers, eight swordsman and eight spearmen. So I'm just going to get started on the armour. So I'm going to start with Balthazar Gold. I'm just going to get a good even coat of this on all the gold areas. I'm going to use a standard brush. You should be familiar with this by now guys. The reason I'm doing the gold first is it is probably the messiest part. Um, a lot of people prefer to start with uh, say the... a lot of people prefer to start with the smaller areas, I prefer to get the big <laughs> messy areas out of the way first. So we're just going to get a nice even coat of this on all the golden areas. So in my last video I mentioned I've got two um, two pots of water, one of those is for metallics and one of those is for non-metallics and that's just so you don't get non-metallic colours in your, uh, so you don't get metallic colours. So you don't get metal pieces in your lovely non-metal colours. So these guys have got a lot of gold on them. They've got a lot of bling. They would definitely be mugged if they were walking around where I grew up from. So you're not worrying about being too careful at this stage. With the gold you just need to get a nice even coat on everywhere, basically everywhere that's going to be gold. Don't worry if you get some on some areas that aren't going to be gold, like the face or whatever. So this is going to probably be a longer video than my Berserker was. But hopefully... Uh, well, this one was requested as well, so hopefully you guys will appreciate it. Um, I do... Any comments I do get, I do listen to them, or read them. And I do do my best to try and... To try and... Um, do what you guys ask me to do. If, if it's in my power, if I've got the models, if, or if I, I want the models and I can afford them, then I'll do my best to get hold of them and paint them for you guys. Because I, I know how daunting it can be to paint these models when you're when you're new to the game or you're unfamiliar with them. And so I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a hand. So there we are guys, that's all the areas that are going to be gold, are now gold, uh, base coated anyway. So once that's dry, I'll come back to you. So we're back again and the gold is dried. And this one's a bit interesting now, what I'm going to paint is not Agarach Earthshade, it is in fact, I can't pronounce it, Celia, Suelia, Coella, I don't know, I call it Celia, Celia Green Shade, make sure it's nice and well mixed. Um, you're just going to paint this over all the gold. So I'm just going to use a nice standard brush. We will get to using some uh, Agrax Earthshade, but um, I like to layer up my gold, and I like to start with this as the sh as the as the shade, the first shade. Make sure we're painting all the areas that are gold. There's a lot of them. You don't want to go too heavy, but you do want to be able to let it pull in some of the recesses. That's about it. It's all the gold done. And it really gives it a kind of old look to it. What I'm trying to achieve is a gold that looks old, but looks well maintained. So I'm just going to bring in one that I've done previously. So this is one of my swordsmen. And this is the kind of level of shading we're going for. And you'll see this at the end because I'm going to paint it in the exact same way. 
I really like it. And when you look up close, you can see elements of the green in there, even though we're going to be doing Agrax Earth Shade and Reichland Flesh Shade. Um, I just think it gives an interesting colour. So I'll come back again when the, the green shade is dried, and I'll see you then. The green shade is dried. We're going to use Genna's Gold and Orikama Gold as highlights to really bring out the gold. What we need to do is highlight each piece of this scale mail. Just work down the lines. And this this is the Orica, uh, this is the Genna's gold, so we're trying to get most of the most of these little individual pieces of scale mail. Now on the original metal models, this was actually um this was actually chain mail which makes a lot more sense but I guess they couldn't do it so easily on the plastic at the time so this is a long process I'm just going to show this half and then I'll do the other half off the camera now a lot of people will just dry brush this but I don't know I don't like the effect that dry brushing gives I don't like the um, for the most part I don't like the kind of leaves lots of little little clumps all over the place and then we need to do each of these this I don't know what you call it plate mail perhaps I'm not an I'm not a P coach or an armor expert if you've watched my my previous berserker video you'll get the uh, P reference You need to do that for all the gold, the helmet, the uh, the uh, uh, braces, I guess they're called. There's um, some gold detailing on the bow, and there's some gold detailing on the um, sheath of arrows. So I'm going to do that off camera, and then I'll come back to you when that's done, and we'll start applying the Orikama gold. Okay, see you in a minute. So I've just finished the Genna's gold, and now I'm going to do the Auric armor gold. There he is, looking good already. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush for this one. I was using my size 4. I'm now going to use my size 0. Just so that I don't get any in the recesses. And we're going to paint over all the gold again. Exactly the same as we did before. Do it all the way along. You can do that on all the individual squares, on the helmet, on the on the wrist guards, on the gold, on the bow, everywhere, on these. So I'll come back once I've done that. So the Orikama gold has been applied and it's now dry. You can see that there's still a little way to go till we go from that to that. But it's starting to get there. What we need to do now is do a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. And once that's dry, we do a wash of Celia green shade. So um, you need to let the Agrax Earth Shade fully dry and we're going to paint this over all of the gold areas. So feel free to use a nice big brush. I'm going to use my Citadel standard brush. Um, just paint it over all the gold. We've already seen, just been painting the same way we did the Celia green shade earlier over the whole thing. And this again will put more depth into it. Really create like deep dark recesses and makes it look really old but well kept. After all some of the elves that are wearing it they might be thousands of years old. What's to say their armour isn't also thousands of years old. Again because we haven't painted anywhere else yet we don't need to be too careful with it. So now we can leave that to dry. Um, already we can see that it's much closer to that one. But there's still a bit to go. See you in a bit. That's dry, it's time for the Celia Green Shade. So again, using our standard brush, we're just gonna brush Celia Green Shade over all the model. <coughs> all the gold areas of the model, that is. Not such a heavy coat this time. 
um, you just want to give the idea that there's well, you want to give the idea of the green in the in the recesses but again we need to get it over all the gold just like that okay when that's dry we'll come back and we'll do the uh, another layer of auric armor gold and then we'll do a final wash of um, Reichland flesh shade to give it a bit more of a ready tone and then that will finish the gold and then we can move on to some of the robes now the Celia green shade is dry our model looks something like this it's very dark what we need to do is reapply the auric armor gold on the edges and then we'll do a final wash to give it a bit more of a red tone. You will need a fine detail brush for this. So something like Games Workshop Fine Detail. I'm using my Windsor & Newton Series 7.0. So all we're going to do is do what we did previously. Using Aurikama Gold. To drop our model on the table. To um, put a fine final highlight on there. Make sure your paint is of a good consistency I'll do this on all the squares and also on all the bands of armor and when that's done I'll come back to you and show you what it should look like see you in a second I'm back I finished applying the auric armor gold and um, it's dry but as we can see it looks a bit tarnished I think is the best word compared to the new the more well cared for gold on that one and to get that effect we just need to use a bit of Reichland flesh shade um, you don't need to you, you don't need to use a lot at all um, just to bring out that gold again so we're not going to apply it like we've applied the Celia green shade and the Agrax earth shade you want very little on your brush and you just don't want to leave too much behind otherwise it will it will make it look far too red just want to bring out that gold and make it look a bit more well cared for well preserved here we are just giving it the, the smallest of layers the smallest of layers I don't want too much at all just so that it pulls nicely in the recesses and nowhere else really There we go, that's it. So that's now the gold finished when it dries. Let me just wash my brush. When it dries, it will look the exact same as um, this one I finished earlier. Oopsie. They're hard to pick up. But it will look the exact same as that one. And then we can begin to work on some of the robes. The first one I'll do um, is the red, just because that's a bit more trickier to get to. And so I don't want to have painted the blue and then try and paint the red around it. So we're going to move on to painting some of the some of the fabrics, the cloaks and the um, undercloaks, the underwear that the elves wear now. Um, we're going to start by painting the red because that's the more difficult to reach bits. And um, the way we're going to do that is that we're going to use corn red. And then we're going to wash it with Agrax Earth, Earth Shade and Celia Green Shade again. I, I, I use that again to help it all blend in together. And also green is really good at um, shading red. It may sound weird, but it's something I learned um, I learned a long time ago, but I only restarted really using recently. Some of my red fabrics always looked a bit flat. They didn't look like there was a lot of shade going on there. And I started using green. Uh, as a way to shade them and I think it does a much better job than just Agrax Earth Shade so uh, not that I don't use that as well but uh, to start with we're going to do corn red and the areas that we're going to paint is actually fairly minimal I think on this model there is only one area you can't get to the other area very easily or if at all but um, typically they have a bit of cloak up there that I'd paint in red but they have this cloak down here that runs down the middle and that's what I'm going to paint and I'm going to do that using corn red as a base coat and literally just straight down the middle there we go 
That's that. So we'll leave that to dry now. While the um, while the red dries, what we can do actually is begin to paint the blue. Now the blue I do with a base coat of Cantor blue, and that's all the other robes basically. So the Cantor blue is going to be painted um, on the robe that goes down the back. So all that all down there. It's going to be painted on this stuff up here, and um, and there's a bit under here that it will go to as well. So yeah, the predominant colours on this are blue and gold. Um, like I say, Cantor blue to start off with. I'm just going to paint that over all the blue areas like so. Now, now that we've finished the uh, gold areas, we need to be careful and make sure that we don't overlap any of these because you don't have to go back and redo that gold process on an area all over again so just be careful how you how you go so I'll finish painting this off camera and when we come back it'll be time to go back to the red so we're back and we're gonna just carry on now finish the blue robe by washing the red now that's dry and this is some of the the things you can do with painting to make it a bit quicker so you paint one bit you let it dry while you paint another bit and then you can come back to it so now I've washed that there would be a bit under there but because of where his hand is it's um it's covered up this time but on the other ones it is there so try and avoid getting too much on the gold either side any if you can and uh, just paint down the middle there and you can see that's nicely shaded now once that's dry we'll go on with the Celia green shade what we're going to do now is apply our Celia green shade to the red. We're also going to apply non oil to the blue. So I'll do the Celia green shade first. Here it is. There we go. So that's on the red that we've previously put Agrax Earthshade on. And then on all the blue, we're going to apply Nuln Oil. That's to give us our shading on there, now that that's dry. Like I said, um, like I say in all my videos, I tend to typically, I don't tend to typically paint one at a time unless I'm doing heroes. So what I'd normally do with these, because there's so many steps, I'd have about four of them on the go. And that would mean in an afternoon, you get a good four painted. You could do eight, but doing the gold especially is a bit is a bit wearisome. I like to I like to see how far I'm getting, so I like to complete four and then start another four rather than taking twice as long to complete eight. I don't know. That's probably just me. Tell me if you feel the same. What would you rather do? Complete four and then complete another four, or complete eight in one go? But while they're drying, what we can do is start another area. Um, and this keeps us keeps us moving. So what we can do is we can paint the ooh, let's paint the wood. So the wood I like to do nice and simply as flat earth, followed by an Agrax Earth Shade wash, and then flat earth the highlight. So it really is simple. I don't want the wood to stand out. I want everything else to stand out, but I do want the wood to be painted. So we're just going to paint the bow and the quiver full of arrows with this flat earth. So that's the bow base coated. And we're also going to base coat the arrows as well. So the arrows, the tops need be need to be coloured brown. And also all the way down down the shaft of the arrow. So. Um, and now I'm going to let that dry because it becomes quite difficult to hold when you've got three different um, paints, I guess, three different paints all trying to dry at the same time. Um, there is still a lot of work to go. We still need to do the leather and we also need to do the flesh and we need to do the fletch on the arrows and then we need to highlight everything up as well. So I'll be back with you after the break. We're back, it's all dry. We're gonna do three layers now on our under robe, that's what I'm gonna call it. The first is to reapply the corn red. The second is a mix of corn red and evil scun scarlet 
And the third is um, straight evil sun scarlet. So we're trying to leave all that dark, nice dark agrax earth shade and celia green shade in the recesses. And we just want to highlight the raised area. So I should probably do that on camera really. So just here. And there, try and go up as far as you can. You can't if you if your brush can't make it to the top, don't worry. And then the same on the other side. There we go. Like that. Then because it's such a small amount of paint, it'll be dry fairly quickly. I'm just gonna mix up the next layer. So about one to one, evil sun scarlet and corn red. Is. Use a bit of water to make sure it's mixed nicely and that the consistency is good. Again, keeping with our fine detail brush. You just want to paint less of the area that you just painted. There we go. And then straight Evil Sun Scarlet. Told you this bit would be quick. Don't need a lot of it at all. Just make sure you've got good consistency with the water. And then again, less area than the last time. Basically, if you do it at the right angle, you can get exactly the right amount on there. There we go. Because you just need to follow the ridge with the edge of your brush. There we go. That's all I wanted to do. So you can see that brings it out nicely there. Now we're going to move straight back onto the. We're going to move straight back to the blue robes. And what we're going to do here is we're going to reapply the Cantor blue. Then we're going to do Cantor blue and the Fang one to one, and then we're going to do the Fang. So as with the under robe, we're going to do three highlights. The first being the original layer. Now, as with the robe on the front, you want to leave the. The dark colour in the recesses and paint less of the lighter colour each time as you would that, that's how a highlight works so you can see along the back here i'm just going to highlight this bit like that leaving the darker blue in the recesses the blue that's been darkened by the null oil painting these models is super easy because there's lots of nice lines you can follow and it really uh really works nicely. Anyone can paint these to make them look okay. Paint the hood up here and then that will be the back of the robe done. We we'll just need to make sure we get the front of the robe. And then we've got the bits that are around and under the arms. Now the clothing's kind of, it's all scrunched up there so you just follow the lines of the folds and you'll get the bits you need to get done. Same with the underarm here. And this bit here. That's the first layer of blue done. I'm going to go for a mix now. So it's one to one. Cantor blue to the fang. So there's your Cantor blue. And there's the fang. Both Games Workshop um, base paints, so give really good coverage. So here you can see the difference between the Cantor Blue and the one-to-one -one mix. Make sure it's nice and watered down. And as with the red, you're just painting slightly less area than you painted. Keeping it on camera, sorry, my apologies. See, these are super easy. Anyone could paint a bunch of these in an afternoon. No problem. And that's that's the idea of my painting tutorials. I don't like playing with unpainted armies. And quite frankly, I don't like playing against unpainted armies. And when painting is this easy, there's no need... And you get... I mean, they're not... You know, they wouldn't win awards on Call cool Mini or not. But when you've got a whole army of these that look 
up to the same standard they're more than tabletop you know you've got more than three colors there's more than one highlight they look fantastic there's no reason not to have a fully painted army so that's our cantor and we're going to move on to our the fang and again I'll show you the color differences so you've got all three there so Cantor blue one to one the fang you can see the difference now this is just for edge highlighting so don't go overboard with this as you can see on the back of this one here if it goes into focus it's just for the edges so follow the edge that runs down down the edge of the cloak there paint down this edge here and then just make sure you do the creases in the fabric by the arms just exactly where the light would be nowhere else bit of edge highlighting try and keep it neat and then just up here there we go, that's the blue done. Oh, bit on the just get a bit on the creases on the hood. There we go. Shaping up already. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the leather, leather, and that is Doom Ball Brown, Agrax Earth Shade, and then um some edge highlights of Bugman's Glow, weird as it sounds. Um it gets a good effect without too much effort. You can see it on the, the gloves of this guy here focuses just make some pop without having to do loads of layering I don't, I don't like to do loads of work on the details I know they say the devil's in the details but um, I think it's better to have good flat areas like the gold that look really good that pop and then the details just complement them nicely and you don't need to spend so long on them then that's my bugbear really with say 40k models I really enjoyed Warhammer and painting Warhammer models probably back when they were being made about 10 years ago or so because the models they had a lot of detail but they weren't they didn't have so much detail that you were swamped and you had too much to try and paint that's one of the reasons why I like Lord of the Rings models so much they are the bare essentials some people have complained and said that um, sometimes they find that harder because some of the models have no details perhaps where they should have details and and some of that's down to the mold process which obviously a lot of the 40k stuff doesn't have the same problem because it's made with newer molds now uh, and the new sculpting they can do on CAD and they can get all the undercuts in the right place and so on and that does help but um, I don't know there's something nice and simple about these Lord of the Rings models that I really enjoy painting and I'm if you're watching this video then I'm sure chances are you feel the same way about them. So there's not many leather areas. There are there is one in particular that is in addition to any of the other models and that is the sheath on the back. So I'm just going to finish the glove there and then we'll move on to this. Now you have to be careful because you have to paint around all that gold that you painted earlier. But that shouldn't be too hard and in fact technique people used to do quite a long time ago was something called black lining and that meant leaving a line of black around everything so you can sort of apply that same technique here just leave a small line of black around everything and that should mean you don't hit the gold and then because you're going to do an agrax uh, this was before washes were around because you're going to do an agrax uh, shade wash it will help it blend into that black line so it won't look so jarring which I always I never really liked about the old black lining technique so there he is that's the leather done um, the base coat rather I'm also going to base coat the face while I'm waiting for some of the other areas to dry and that is with around here Bugman's Glow and on the face work from Bugman's Glow and a wash up through Cadian Flesh Tone to Kislev Flesh then we'll apply a further wash and then straight Kislev flesh again on top of that just to make some of the features really pop out like the nose for example so the flesh is literally just the face you need to be careful with this because you might um, get some on the gold that you've been doing so just take it slow just make sure you get under his chin and his neck 
just in there. This is why it's important to have a, a brush with a very good tip. And don't overload it either. Get the nose and the mouth up into the corner there. Just make sure we're nicely under there. Under that chin. So that's all the skin. And I'll do the base coat of the Fletch while I'm here. And that I'm just going to do ivory, a wash of Agrax Earth Shade and then ivory again. Nice and easy. Nothing too difficult. In fact, a lot of these details, a lot of these, a lot of these smaller areas, I do tend to paint as just a base coat or wash and then one highlight, just because I don't, I don't really want them to be the focal point of the model. I want the armor to be a focal point. I want the robe, the red robe, to be a focal point. So that's where I put the effort in. And that's not to say I don't paint it. I mean, it is painted. It's painted to a good standard. And to be quite frank, I don't think anyone's ever noticed, if I wasn't telling you this on YouTube, that that was how I did it. That they were only a single colour and a single wash and a single highlight, rather than what I do on the larger areas, which is a wash, a, high, a, a base coat, a wash, reapply the base coat, one highlight, two highlight, maybe even a third highlight. You can go too far sometimes. Simple is better. And again, that's why I'm making these videos. I'm making these videos to show you that you can get good, decent standard models really quickly. Like, you could happily field him now. There's nothing wrong with this guy. Nothing wrong with this guy at all. Just needs a little bit of work to bring him up to the next level. So, while I wait for the leather, the skin, and the fletch on the arrows to dry what I can work on is the bow and the wood and to do that I'm just gonna apply flat uh, Agrax did I apply Agrax Earthshade? I don't think I did so I'm gonna apply Agrax Earthshade in fact the other areas that I've just painted look dry and they all need Agrax Earthshade so I'm gonna apply Agrax Earthshade on all of those so that's the boots easy peasy Number one, number two, that's the quiver for the arrows. There we go. That's the bow. Nice and easy. You'll notice from my videos that I think washes are great. I'll use them on every model I do. Um, doesn't matter how simple or how complex, they're fantastic. And uh, I'm trying to be careful where I apply this because there's one area that I haven't painted yet, so I'm going to go and paint that because that needs um, Agrax Earthshade as well. Sorry if this is a bit difficult to follow. Um, I will put a full painting guide on what paints are on what areas. That will be up on my blog, which you can get to from my YouTube um, page. Uh, and I'll put a link down below as well. So the hair is just going to be dark sand, wash of Agrax, that's a dark sand Vallejo, wash of Agrax air shade and then dark sand highlight. And that gives you a nice blonde hair. It's hard to find anywhere to hold it now. Yeah. So all I'm going to do is let the hair dry. I'm going to apply Agrax Earth Shade to all those areas we just painted. So finish up with the leather, the wood, the fletch, uh, the hair, and that's about it. And then what we'll come back and do on the next part is uh, reapply the base coat. And then for certain areas, we'll go a little bit further. But essentially this guy's pretty much there now. Okay. So now that uh, Agrax Earthshade is dry, we can begin to do the final um, layers and the final highlights. So I'm just gonna run through them really quickly because I appreciate this video has been going on for a little while now. So I'm gonna go with the 
wood, which is just flat earth. Um, here we go. So we need this on the bow. So I'm just going to paint it where the light will catch it. So there on the front and up here. Just like that. I don't worry about not unless I'm doing a character model, say. I don't worry about doing um, graining in the wood or anything like that. Um, and then on the individual arrows, just use the side of the brush to paint each shaft so that you're not trying to dry brush them or anything like that. So that's the wood done. Uh, what else do we need to do? Let's do the fletch. That's just straight ivory again over the ivory and agrax that we've already done. Um, use a fine detail brush for this because the fletch on these is sculpted individually and we want to try and pick that out as best we can. So down the edge of each arrow, I'm just going to put small dots to pick out the individual bits of fletch. So if you can see that on here. Make sure you keep your your paint fluid, keep adding a little bit of water when you feel it go dry, wash your brush out to make sure it's not all dried out. go around the other way there we go that's the fletch done that's nice and easy so we're going to do the leather and that's just um, Bugman's glow now this I'll just do as a fine edge highlight just to pick out the really raised areas um, so the fingers on the gloves you just want to do it in as thin line as possible so on the shoes so Make sure I haven't got too much on my brush. Just want to do a fine highlight like that, like that, and the same with this one. I'm just like catching the tip of the shoe, really, the bit that would be in the light, and then got the the strap for the arrows just painted the strap for the arrows uh, and we're also going to do the fingers and then that's that done so just try and get a bit on each individual finger just trying to make them stand out a bit there we go and these fingers and the thumb maybe a bit down here that's the leather done what have we got left? I think that's just the hair and then the face, so the hair is just dark sand on top of the dark sand and agrax earth shade that we've already done. I want it to be nice and fluid as usual. And we're trying to pick out individual strands of hair. So this side's probably the best to show you on. Can you see where the natural recesses are formed? We just want to make that stand out even more. And this is where people get frustrated because there's not a lot of hair sculpting where the two halves of the mould meet. You just need to paint your own in, just you know the direction the hair's going in. Just create lines. Just like that. And make sure we get some under there. There we go. So I'm happy with the hair on that one. And last but not least, we need to do the face. So I'm just gonna work through the colours quickly. 
to show you. So it's going to be Cadian flesh tone on top of what we've already done. And this you want to try and pick out almost everything. Just leave some in the recesses. Don't paint over the eyes. So make sure you've get, got the nose. Excuse the, the chair underneath me. So we get the nose. Make sure you get the chin. Now again, um, this is a Citadel layer paint. So it tends to be quite trans translucent. So it will leave some of the stuff underneath showing through. Which can be good. I don't particularly like it when I'm trying to paint faces, other people might. There we go, so that's that done. And then we go to Kislev Flesh, which is the lightest sort of warm flesh shade that Citadel do, I believe, stand to be corrected. And then we reapply it to the areas we just applied it to, but in a slightly smaller area. So we're not trying to reapply it to the whole of the area we just did. Just. Now his face looks a bit too white at the minute. So I do some Reichland Flesh Shade. Add a bit of redness to it. And then I do a final highlight of um, Kislev Flesh. Just to make the nose really stand out so apply this all over takes it down a bit more ready and also helps to highlight it a bit better and then you let that dry once that's dry you just use a very small amount of kids live flesh just to pick out his nose, his chin, and that's about it really. So, it's been a long time coming, but we finally got another couple of Let's Paints, and uh, we managed to get today our finished Galatrium Archer who is going to look fantastic on the tabletop with a bit of basing and we also have our finished Berserker who looks suitably bloodied and there they are side by side so this is like the classic pose from the movie Berserker is ready to charge in the Galadrium's ready to put him down with an arrow. I hope you've enjoyed these two painting videos. I hope you will apply the techniques you've seen here today to your own painting and you'll be able to improve your models and you'll have a fully painted army in no time. If you like the video, then please comment on what you've seen. If you've got any suggestions for me to do, if you'd like to see anything else, um, please suggest below. If you please like, comment, share and subscribe, I'd be very grateful. And as always, please check out my blog and also mtgspares.weebly.com for some cheap Magic the Gathering cards. I'll see you all soon, hopefully with some more videos.